Kamala Harris makes history after becoming the first colored female vice president of the United States. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are new to this channel, kindly hit the subscribe button and turn on your notification bell. Leave a comment below. I subscribe. I'll do well to reply to all the comments. Thank you. The nation was born with the words, all men are created equal. It's taken more than two centuries for that promise to begin to be realized by a woman. Kamala Harris struggled when she ran to be the Democratic Party's pick for president, but later found a role as the progressive counterweight to Joe Biden's more establishment candidacy. Joe Biden and I are proud, patriotic Americans who share the values with the vast majority of the American people who want a president of the United States who speaks truth. She was born in California to immigrant parents of Jamaican and Indian heritage. There would be a meaningful discussion. She was elected to the Senate four years ago off the back of a successful career as a prosecutor, something that later damaged her support among some liberals who thought she'd been too tough on African-American defendants. She graduated from this university, where her elevation to the nation's second highest office is viewed as hugely symbolic. I have to admit I'm still in a bit of shock about it. Like, I'm thrilled I wanted this to happen. I imagine that she's going to take all the things that she learned over her lifetime and put them into policy, which will make her, again, more than a symbol. It'll make her a politician of substance. Kamala. It's not Kamala. Not Kamala. But she still had to teach the country how to say her name. I'm Kamala Harris. And she was openly attacked by the president. I thought she was the meanest... Uh, the, the most horrible, most disrespectful of anybody in the U.S. Senate. If Kamala Harris had been born more than 100 years ago, she would not have been able to vote. And as a black woman, she would have had no rights. But now she's set to become the most powerful and influential woman in American political history. Nomi Iqbal, BBC News, Washington. Well, as we've been seeing, there are jubilant scenes in cities across the U.S. with people celebrating the new Democratic triumph. Though some Trump supporters have been on the street showing support for his continuing fight. Clive Myrie joins us from Philadelphia in Pennsylvania, one of the key battlegrounds and the state that eventually gave Mr. Biden the votes needed for victory. Clive. Yeah, this is the Philadelphia story. Pennsylvania is the state where Joe Biden was born. It's where he began and ended his campaign for the White House. It's also the state where his values were forged and a certain kinship for blue collar working class America. So perhaps it's fitting that Pennsylvania is the state that gave him the votes and gave him the presidency. This is the soundtrack of the Biden campaign, and now a new American. In the age of COVID-19, his election rallies were drive-in and socially distanced. Supporters honked in his speeches instead of applauding. It's all over! It's all over! Outside their cars, the president elects ecstatic supporters, no less noisy. In the shadow of the building where election votes are being counted. The subjects of their ire, forlorn Donald Trump voters across this Philadelphia street. America's rancorous political divide in miniature. Joe Biden says he wants to bring both sides together. He wants to be a leader for all America. At the moment, they can't even share the same street without barricades and the police. Donald Trump lost in part because suburban women turned on him. Listen to Penny Olds and her daughter Hattie, who set up a Facebook group to support Joe Biden. We started with four and we ended with 142. It was incredibly empowering. And it was therapy for us women who felt dis disregarded. I'm a woman in my 20s and it's just really important for people my age to be behind someone who supports us to the full. Four years. Four years. But Tim Trimble, who once called Essex home, says Donald Trump's fight isn't over. He has not lost the election. I think because BBC and CNN and ABC calls it, 
That's irrelevant. Meanwhile, on the same street in another America, they're dancing for Joe and tonight won't sleep. Clive Myrie, BBC News in Philadelphia. This US election has seen the highest turnout since 1900. So far, Mr. Biden has won nearly 75 million votes, the most ever for a US presidential candidate. Mr. Trump, meanwhile, is currently at less than 71 million, the second highest tally in history. Our North America editor, John Soport, joins us again. John, with no sign of Donald Trump conceding, what happens now? Yeah, well, it's not like UK elections, because in UK elections, the removal people would have arrived outside Downing Street the next morning to take out all their possessions. Donald Trump is the president until January the 20th. So Joe Biden, in the meantime, what he'll be doing is he'll be assembling a task force to deal with the coronavirus outbreak, something he said is central. He'll be looking at who the key cabinet picks will be. He will be proceeding as if there is no fly in the ointment. There are no challenges ahead. He will want the the momentum to be there that he will take over as president in January and already world leaders are flocking to him. Donald Trump has a different set of calculations to make. How far does he pursue this legal action? Because at the moment the allegations have flowed freely but the detail of what the offences may have been are much more thin on the ground and there's some reporting from people well connected that Donald Trump may be looking for a way at some point to get himself off a hook that he's on and may be having to accept that he will have to concede graciously and that Joe Biden is the next president. There are celebrations going on in the big cities like Washington. This is Black Lives, Pla Black Lives Matter Plaza uh, earlier on today. Big celebrations, but it's very different from 2008. And I was here when Barack Obama became president. Then there was this warm, fuzzy feeling that an African-American had become America's uh, president. This time, it's much more visceral. There is a sense of delight that Donald Trump has been beaten, much more so than Joe Biden has been elected. And I think that speaks to divided America, that when Joe Biden does become president in January, that is the big crisis that he's going to have to try to heal. John, thank you. John Sopel in Washington.